on the mat. It's going to be a nice rocket yoga class. Just for getting started, maybe you have a nice mat. You could even use like blanket for after if you have some more items or toys like a block or like bricks, um, whatever there is you would like to incorporate into your practice. Just have it around you. A nice comfortable position. So you might want to cross your legs normally, as usual, if you have it in your practice, a like half lotus or even a complete lotus, whatever helps you right now to feel comfortable in the present moment and to bring all your attention towards that space around you, maybe even limit it to your mat. Let's close our eyes. Just for the next instances, bring all attention towards your body, the physical sensations, the day which has recently started. Just feel it in yourself. Maybe reflect on how you woke up today, which emotions came to your mind. And what is actually reflecting in your physical body? Are there any tensions? Do you feel stiff somewhere? How is your breathing rhythm? Just stay there for a couple more minutes. And focus on relaxing. Whatever you can relax right now. But in a conscious way. So feel the weight in your shoulders, in your knees, in your legs. Feel the connection in the floor, how you start spreading your roots out to your base, to all points of contact that you have on your mat. Observe until where the air is entering your lungs, traveling further into your belly. So feel that way of expansion and contraction that airstream crossing your entire body. And how with each exhalation, you start rooting down more. So your neck is actually expanding. Your shoulders are tearing down more. Feel that space that is getting created over there. Feel how with each exhalation, your knees are even more heavy. And at the same time, how your inhales are installing each of your vertebras on top of each other. That this line of energy is creating itself. And bring your palms together in the center of your chest. More and more breathing in a balanced way. Deep inhales and deep exhales, slowing down your own rhythm, creating space for what's about to come next. So if there's any dedication you would like to give today's class, bring it to your mind and to your conscious. And especially promise yourself to stay connected with yourself. Keep breathing, keep feeling your entire essence And practice in harmony to learn more about yourself, listen to yourself and open new perspectives. Take a deep inhale through your nose and exhale, just let your head drop down, relax your shoulders once more, feel your shoulder blades relaxed, your neck once more expanding. slowly open your eyes. We're getting started with breathing a little more consciously. So it's actually about just bringing more life into your upper body. Your hands are on your knees. Just take your next exhale and drop back. So your belly is actually pulling in. Your chin is falling down. Feel expansion in your upper back 
and in your neck and inhale, keep making your arms straight and pull yourself forward and upwards so your chest is opening as if you want to connect your heart with the ceiling and exhale one more time. Keep your breathing rhythm slow and feel how you breathe dropping back. Inhale, once more. Maybe there's a little more opening happening and exhale, rounding your back. The more you can, the better it is. Start entering more deep. Take a deep inhale here. Shoulder blades are getting closer together. Your throat is really long. And exhale one more time. So pull your ear out until there's no, no one left. Inhale. Open. And exhale. Both hands slightly behind your hips. Take another deep inhale. Push you to the floor and lift your hips. Push with your knees into the floor. Let your head drop back. Feel the strength in your arms. Exhale. Come down. Like that. The same, we're walking forward with our hands. Take another inhale and exhale. You want to straighten your back, so take, make it as long as possible. Separate your vertebras, but stay seated behind, so you are really in connection with the net. One more time here, take an inhale, pull the floor in order to lengthen your spine a little more and exhale in. Come back up. And we are interlacing our fingers in front of us. Another push out of all the air you have in order to straighten your arms forward. Your head is heavy. Inhale, come up. Super. You might want to try to keep your ribs closed so there's a difference to pull them out and make an arch or to stay straight and just work on your arms bringing them back but your ribs are closed. And in your next exhalation, once more, just the opposite. Feel the space that is like getting closer around your belly. Inhale, come up. And in your exhale, bring your head just behind, your hands behind your head. Take another inhale, open up your elbows. Stay relaxed with your knees and exhale as if, if you want to bring them together. Expand your neck. Take another inhale, open up. Feel your shoulders, feel the elbows, how they want to open up more, and exhale. Feel the neck here. One more inhale. And exhale, both hands to the floor. Find a supported position here, the tabletop pose. So just keep breathing here. Inhale, open up. Shoulder blades rolling back. Your neck is long your throat is long and exhale, push your air out, reject the floor, pushing into your mat, inhale once more, as if your belly really wants to land on the mat, feel the muscles in your, in your shoulder, in your back and exhale, one more time, take another inhale here, and in your next exhale, I'm doing it just the other direction to show you, but use your right hand now, and bring your shoulder just behind your wrist. Lay down with that arm as straight as possible. Also, arm, um, the palm looking to the floor. And try to twist. Maybe you look out to the ceiling. If it's still comfortable for you, you can walk your right hand over your head to the back. So that helps you to twist more. But since it's very intense, just feel if you're ready for that already. And if not, Take a step back. One more time. Inhale. Push yourself back up. Find space and exhale. Enter into the other direction. This time use your left hand and make any adjustments that you would like to do. So you want to feel the effect in your shoulders how they're twisting and rolling up to the, towards the ceiling. Feel your spine here, your hips want to stay neutral as much as possible. And inhale, push yourself up with the power of your hands. One more time, exhale, all the air out. And in your next inhale, find your first downward facing dog. So this inhale was about to push your hips up. Stay as much as you can bent with your knees in order to feel, first of all, all the power in your hands, in your arms, how you're pushing back there. So feel the connection with your, with your legs and the ribs. And from there, the goal is actually to slowly straighten down, but you don't want to start rounding your back. 
If you feel it happens, bend again and start straightening out your spine. Stay there breathing, connecting. You can bend one knee, then the other more. Feel the hip, how it's staying high, helping you to feel that line until the end. Feel your shoulders connect with any needs your body might have for today. And slowly step, step by step, in between your hands. Let yourself hang in there. Go from right to left. Starting to connect with your legs. Your head is heavy. Losing your elbows. Bend your knees a little more and take a deep inhale to roll up. Vertebra by vertebra. The last to close up is your chin. Take another inhale to bring your shoulders as high as possible and exhale, bring them down. So feel your lengthening in that neck area. Activate your fingers, your arms. Your heels are slightly separated and we're preparing ourselves for our first sun salute. In your next inhale, bring your hands up. Invite all possible space in your body, legs still go down. Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen forward. Strong legs, strong back, and your hands as well, strong. Exhale, maybe both hands in the floor. You can step back or jump back. In one same exhalation, onto the floor. Take an inhale, tuck your chin. At last, bring it up and activate your shoulder blades. Bring them together back. Exhale, Adam. Downward facing dog. Super. So we are staying in that classic position of Adamuka just to connect a little more and especially to feel our air entering and leaving our body. Activate through your hips, they're high. And maybe your gaze goes to, towards the navel. If you have your Ujjayi breathing, already applied to your practice. Just use it as your guide. Hear the noise of your breathing to lead your in and out of all postures. In your next exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step or jump in between your hands. Inhale further, open up and exhale, bend down. Take another inhale, come all the way up. And we go directly, exhale into our atom, into our Uddhanasana. Take an inhale, open your chest, feel the extension in your neck, and exhale, step or jump. Plank pose, lower down, take another inhale, maybe this time your knees don't touch the floor, push your uh, metatarsis or your wrists into the floor, open up, and exhale, and move up. So we're starting to pump a little more power into our body. In your next inhale, bring your right leg back up, and exhale, bend your knee, Push your left heel up and bring that knee to your forehead. Try to stay far from the floor so you push into the ground. Inhale back up. Repeat the same. Exhale. Push your air out. Your navel goes in and your knees as high as possible. Inhale back up. And exhale this time. Bend your knee and open up your right hip. So bring that upper heel as much as you can backwards as if you want to drop it down. For all of you who know variations here, you can either drop back with the leg, open your first arch, or you can make an intermediate level of staying up here and bring your left elbow towards the ground, looking up to the ceiling through your right axle. Just keep in mind, your left leg is always straight, so push into the floor, your heel stays connected. In your next inhale, straighten back up and exhale, come down. We go to the other side. Inhale, left leg goes up. Start pumping, feel the air exiting your body. Exhale, knee stays high, push it to the floor. Navel goes in, inhale back up. And exhale, push your air out. Feel all the weight on top of your hands. Inhale back up. Exhale, bend that knee and find the same variation. Just important, feel that you stay pushing back with your hands so you're not starting to open. You stay in your Adamuka. Find your variation. And come back in your exhale to bring both hands to the mat. Inhale, 
push the left knee up and exhale, arm up. Very nice. Take another inhale here. Exhale, bend your knees, step or jump in between your hands. Take an inhale and exhale, Uddhasana. One more time, take all the air in. Uddhasana and we go down directly to the floor. Uddhasana. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, press into the floor. Step or jump. Down. Inhale, open. Be aware of your chin, how it's rolling up as last piece. And exhale, arm. Very, very nice. So from here, we're going to shorten the distance slightly, getting more into control. After making fire, we start to, to get it under control. Bring your right hand to your right heel. For today, maybe it's everything you do. If you want to travel further, stay with the left, left arm as much as you can straight and release the weight of your left foot. So if you want, you can just feel how the big toe stays on the floor, or if even, it comes up. In this variation, feel your lines. That's the most important part of the practice. Feel all your lines extended. In the same way you come up, come back down. Slowly find your Adhamukha. Take an inhale here, feel the space, and exhale, find the other side. Find your time and your own inspiration to get into your same variation that you chose at the other side. Your gaze is stable. <laughs> it's really challenging. And stay breathing. If all the pieces are made together, that's the practice. And slowly find the way back. Take another inhale in. Add yoga. Exhale, bend your knees. Look forward, step or jump. In between your hands, open up. And exhale, lower down. One more inhale. Urvastasana. And exhale, Samastiti. We made the first round. We're continuing into the second sun salute. So from there, we're again having a nice connection with the floor. We're getting more connection with our spinal cord. So from here, take another inhale first. Bring your hands up. Take your left wrist with your right arm. Take another inhale here and pull that arm. In your exhale, bring it to the right side. So stay in a neutral position with your hips and just stay there pulling your arm. You could even try to move towards the ceiling. Feel how your ribs on the left side are opening. Inhale, come back up. Change sides, exhale. Inhale, lengthen and exhale, enter. Just sideways, as if you would stand between two walls. Pull a little more. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, both hands together. And inhale, open up to the back. So it's not about just dropping back, it's about opening your chest towards the ceiling. Growing. And exhale, come all the way down, bend your knees, and now take an inhale, all the way to your heels. Exhale there. In Uttanasana, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or jump. Take it even to the floor. Inhale, roll up. Exhale, Adhanukha. And in your next inhale, right leg goes between your hands, behind your warrior. Okay, here we are, both hips squared. You are in your warrior. Bring your left heel up, inhaling. And exhale, twist over to your right side. So you're looking over your right shoulder. Both hands, read your fear spread. Two. One, that's very good. Exhale, lower down. Find your hand on the floor. And inhale, push the right knee far from you. It's not only about pushing, it's about bringing your chest back and up. If you have a variation, you can grab your wrist behind. Sink more in with that hip. Mm -hmm. Two. One. Both hands on the floor. You can choose if you want to simply step back here 
or choose to go into a full vinyasana. Inhale and exhale. In the next inhalation, left leg goes between your hands. Draw that very connected line up to the ceiling. In your next inhale, bring your he he heels up and exhale, twist over your left side. Open up your fingers, your hands. Two. Straighten it through your light, right leg behind and exhale, bring it down. Your hand goes to the floor and inhale. Push that knee far from you, sink in with your hips and twist your chest towards the, right, the left side, looking at the ceiling. Finding your variations. Just connect with that feeling in your hips, in your back. Exhale, both hands forward. Find your connection back towards your Adho Mukha, downward facing dog. So from here, we're shortening the distance again, and in your next exhalation, bring your right hand towards the left hip, and find your twist. If you have followed my other classes, you may know some additional ways. Either to bend your right knee towards your right axle, or even to start flying again. Keeping that very nice push in your left arm on the mat to bring that other knee and right side up. It's still a twist. Slowly come back. And exhale, find the other side. First twist. Feel the twist. And make your way step by step. Consciously, wherever you feel you're still breathing, you are in charge of your breathing, you can go further. Two, one, slowly find your way back, take another inhale and exhale, step or jump in between your hands. Take an inhale and exhale, lower down. Utkadasana, bend your knees, come all the way up. Interlace your fingers, push up. And in your next exhale, we're going into the half version. So stay looking down. Extend your spine and feel the extension throughout your neck by looking down the floor. So your arms are not going lower than your ears. Keep them in one level with the floor. Two. Feel the legs burning. One. Exhale. Interlace your fingers in the back. Take another inhale. Open. And exhale, first you roll over and then last you're straightening your legs. You can already start by feeling the balance in your palm of your foot, of both of your feet. So maybe you want to shift your weight slightly forward already. Open up your bind, but stay up with your arms. They're your wings right now. So we want to keep pulling down our chin towards the floor, but your hip is the part that wants to go up now, so feel your back. So from here, you just shift your weight forward and find to lift your heels. Your legs are straight and you keep your connection. Go high with that heels. If they're really nicely high, keep them together too. Almost down a little higher. One, and exhale, bend down. So you, your heels are still high. You know it already. Now it's time for doing Bhakasana and arm balance a little bit to heat up our, our wrists and ankles. So if you're not used to Bhakasana so far, you can also always try to keep your hands down. And first, bring your hips up. So from here you want to Lay down with your, heel, with your knees on top of your elbows and just shift your weight a little. It's all about feeling that control of weight in your, in your hands. So when, whenever you're there, your goal is to keep squeezing your knees and to push up your hips so you want to have them high. And maybe today the big toe is the one that stays on the floor, like the last part. <laughs> so for all of you who do Bakasana already, Come back down. For today we're having a new exercise. 
which I, I like very much and need to prepare nicely for. Hand standing for more power in our arms and whatever it might be as well. So whenever we are in Vakasana, <clears throat> we start to play around with that connection to give like some small tasks to ourselves to keep the hip up but play with our feet. So if you can do that up to three times, wonderful. <laughs> and then jump back wherever you go, okay? So we meet again in Adamuga. If you jump back, you can decide to do your chaturanga back to the downward facing dog. In your next inhale, right leg goes into front. Bring your hands up, interlace your fingers and look, look forward. Square your hips. Two. One. In your next exhale, interlace your fingers in the back. Take another inhale. This is what I, I really like. Start straightening your arms and roll them down alongside your straight leg. So maybe you find your knee there and open your chest up. Keep bending your front leg. Take another inhale. Both hands in front on top of you and exhale, bend towards the front, shift your weight into your warrior three. Three, two, one, that's it. From here, bring your hands towards the back and maybe meet them with your foot. And slowly shift your weight back to standing and press that heel in. So your chest stays straight. Feel that line in your right leg, which allows you to keep balance. Lose the, the connection and bring your knee in front of you, pressing it in. Keep that line in your right leg. Two. One, and from here, all the way down, we're bending and straightening that leg up. So it's a standing split. Wherever you want to go here, Today the proposal would be to keep transferring that weight on top of our palms, which are really pressing down onto the floor. And next step a little back. And that heel of that right leg goes high, 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 high. Activate. So you want to push as much as you can. If you want, you can start from now by jumping in some small scissor jumps for headstand, headstanding. So it's just about keeping that straight leg up. It's not going down. So you start to give some time, some tempo, to feel the hip heart shifting over. And your arms are helping by keeping that line. So wherever you go, you land with your left leg as far as you can back and open in your warrior two. Look over your front arm, relax your shoulders. You are just in one line. Bend your front knee nicely. Two. One. Inhale. Straighten your front leg and go deeper into your Uttita Trikonasana. Imagine as if you would like to go up, to come back up now. That's the inertia, that's the, the, the feeling that you should have in your torso. It's super active, as if it wants to go up. If you have the connection with your big toe, pull it. Two. One. In your next exhale, look down. Bring your right arm like slightly in front of you. And just with one bigger step, Ardha Chandrasana. So here again, all kinds of modifications are possible. You can try to make Bind with your upper wrist and find the dancer and even bring your hand far from the floor by pulling into your left arm. Three, two. I just like to remind you there is always the option to do it with belt. If those binds are heavy to be done, slowly release and exhale. Coming to a slightly shorter distance, both feet are really nicely forward. Inhale here deeply and first exhale bend down in front. So 
so you can grab your leg from below, okay? You just keep pulling and straightening through both legs. From there, you bring your left arm to the outside part of your right foot, push into it in order to open up that space here and lift your right hand. Keep pushing. What happens if you don't push? You used to collapse and there's a really hard way to look actually up to the ceiling and all balance is pretty compromised. So push down, find that line that really helps you to twist your right shoulder back to one, exhale, look down. Your left arm goes more in front of you and again, just shift to bring that leg up. Two, one, find another bind here, if you can, okay? Open up with your left hand more. This time we're going in a nice variation. Bend with that right leg as if you want to come to sit and start straightening up until you come to sit. You can still open the mind and just come to sit. So this time your right knee is just bent over, your left leg is straight. Come forward with your fingertips and exhale lower down. Your elbows are nicely opened. Two, and maybe you activate through your left foot. One, good. In you come back up. Twist over. Release that foot from back. Step far back as you can and shift over to your extended angle pose. So your left foot is on the floor, your hips are low, and you should look towards your hand on top of your head. If you have the bind, go for it. Do it. Two. One. And if you want to stay here, stay here. Or if you want to go further, step in front. So there the small advice is just that you slide along that standing leg to keep that line of balance. And at last you open up your chest. And at last you might straighten your leg. Two. One. In your very own rhythm, step back down in your own way. Find your original pose. Take another inhale. Lift your left hip. Uh, heel. <laughs> And exhale, lower down. That left arm stays up and in your next exhale, bring it to the outside part of your right knee and start making your prayer. You can stay here, but try to get rid of that weight on top of your leg, okay? So you push down both forearms in a vertical position. If you're here, you can choose to make the bind. And if it's still nice and comfortably, push up that knee. Always looking towards the ceiling. Two. One. Nice. In your exhale, both hands to the inner side of your right foot and start moving around. You can even lower your elbows.
the following pinch after. Your hip is still high and you bring up one leg, helping yourself to shift that weight of your hip over your, your elbows, okay? So you might just do that, change leg. Our bodies always have a simple side and a pretty heavy side. Just experience it, feel it. And maybe today, that's all you do. If you're already high in the picture, it's about that we're not actually trying to always jump because it compromises a lot our line. So that's why I always focus on going in slow by leaning in. And if you're here and if you have a nice pinch up, you can play around with your gaze. For today, you might try to look up to your toes, come back or do any variations to feel that power in your elbows as long as they keep pushing down and you have that connection with your power line you can pretty much do whatever you like up there <laughs> and the ones who say oh that's pretty tough just stay shortly seated on your heels maybe for now bring your wrists into your, your legs and keep breathing maybe you close your eyes Connect with your heartbeat. You can also stay in Balasana if you prefer it, if your body is asking for it. By just bringing down your forehead to the floor, relaxing your shoulder blades. Become aware of all the heat that is moving in your body right now. Heat, which is literally prana, energy. Manifested it within us. So it's a delicious feeling to become aware that your body is alive, reacting to all what we give. Whenever you feel concentrated again, balanced in your breathing, find your own personal way back into your Adamuva. Your next inhalation, your left leg goes in front. Find the warrior in rock version. Two, always focusing on lifting up. You want to extend your spine. Hips are squared. One, exhale, bend, make a bind on the back. And start rolling down. You stay bent with your front leg. Open up. Align your gaze with the ceiling and in your next exhalation, go forward, both hands straight at you, shift your weight into your warrior three. Without seeing it, feel how your back heel is aligning with your chin. It's all in one level. One. In your next exhale, find your wrist in the back. And Play around with that shifting of that weight. Whenever you stand back, there should be a slight release because you find your balance line again. Push your heel into your buttocks by opening up your chest more, closing your shoulder blades. Slowly release and bring that knee in front of you. Take an inhale and exhale, push it towards you. So that pushing helps us also to become aware of straightening our back. Bring your shoulder blades together. Two. One. Open up. Find your hands on the, on, the, on the floor. Take another inhale to straighten. And exhale. Find your standing side. Two. One. Both hands on the floor. And find, maybe today, your scissor jumps. Always with both. And whenever you finish trying, in your next exhale, just jump back far away from you to find your warrior two. Focus on that posture. Calm down. Relax your shoulders. Very often I see 
people standing like this because they know here we should be very active and engaged that your navel is pulling in and up but still there's a lot of relaxation at the same time in our upper back make space between your shoulder blades two one in your next inhale straighten your leg and come into your Uti and Trikonasana. Remember that pulling from your big toe. You want to go up. You don't want to fall down. Stay there. Create space between your shoulder blades. Push back your head. Straightening both legs. Exhale, look down. Bring your hands next to you and find a controlled movement to open up into your Ardha Chandrasana. Find the variation of bringing a bind with your wrist and starting to square your hips in order to come up into your dancer. If you don't want to come up, just stay with your hand on the floor and feel that wrist that pulling into your, into your hand palm that opens up your slight arch. In your next exhale, come down. And we shorten the distance slightly. Both feet are more looking in front than before. Take another inhale, straighten. And exhale, bend over your front leg. So you want to actually connect your chin with your big toe. Just imagine, project that line, the direction you want to go. You want to be long. If you want to make more balance, bring your hands on top of your shins. And keep pulling there. Keep lengthening. In your next exhalation, bring your right hand to the outside part of your left foot and inhale, push down, aligning both of your shoulders, your palms, your wrists, and at last followed by your gaze. Two. Super nice one. Exhale down. You stay there by just walking your right arm to the out, to the inside part of your left foot. Find a flight with your right leg back from you. Find the twist, bringing again that left arm in connection with your right foot. Walk out your right arm as much as you can and start bending your standing leg. Come to sit. It's all about trying to find a nice smooth way to sit and to redistribute your weight in an intelligent way for your own body. So whenever you're there, you're straightening your right leg, sitting on your right hip. Left foot palm is on the floor. Walk forward, so you want to really go forward, not to the side. But your hands are open. Your elbows are making like a cactus shape. Take another inhale, open up. And exhale in. So it should be even just your fingertips on the floor because we're really lifting. We're actually having like a lifted feeling in our torso. Take another inhale, come up. From where you came, your hands placed in that front position. Stand up. So it's actually a challenge to find a smooth way of distributing your weight away from your hips, more into the front and helping yourself with the activation of your arms. So hand standards should make that easy. <laughs> it's just another nice exercise we're doing. Push your weight in front. There's no weight on your back leg. Step back as much as you can and open up. Left, left hand outside of your right foot, left foot, and straighten your arm front on top of your head. Push into your back foot so that it's really pushing down if you have the bind. Find it again, looking up, two, one, and if you follow me, either you stay there or you step forward, sliding along your left leg, along your right, until you come standing, where you find that line that releases your tensions, and at last, can you straighten your leg, two, one, slowly come back down. It's always important to find that same control way down. So that's the sign for yourself to say, I am in charge of the present moment. 
Inhale, come back up. Your back heel is lifting and exhale, come down. Stay lengthened with your right arm. In your next exhalation, belly goes in. Find your elbow at the outside part of your left knee. Palms pressing together. So it's all about twisting in and looking towards the ceiling. If it's comfortable, do your same variation that you chose at the other side. Two. One. Slowly come back down. Both hands in front. Let's relax our hips a little so your back is extended. Always try to avoid this. So we want to go forward. And if that helps, bring your elbows down. More intense for our hips. And if it's still nice, you can either relax your knee on the mat or activate more. Open up here. Both hands to the floor. And we're going to shift through a Kundinyasana or a simple step back into our Adhamukha. It's the second part of our pincha from here. So for all of those who have a wall, I would recommend that we start today um, changing shape a little bit. Okay. So, since I have a wall, you can do it, or just, it's always free. You can do your own pincha, maybe stay there for seven breathings, or you play around a little more. So, we are, we are in front of a wall. It's always nice to have an arm length away from the wall. So, you just measure it, and then you put your palms, okay? So, from now, if you feel very unsafe, you can come closer, obviously. But from now, the idea is that you come up, and you find just your big toe at the wall. You don't want to have too much connection. Start opening up your chest, looking forward, and it's a really exaggerated lengthening of your throat towards the wall. So you start sinking in with your hips and always keep opening, opening, opening your chest. So your elbows are still pushing into the floor. So don't go too fast to make that arching in your back. Your feet are just sliding down automatically. Stay connected until you feel safe enough to release. Very nice and important. Find your straight line back after. And that's the very interesting part before you come down. Maybe stay down. Wherever you go, stay there. So it was just a small <laughs> excursion into changing of shapes to come from a very arched, open scorpion pincha back to close up into a straight position without falling. When you have that controlled and you are really feeling comfortable with getting there, it helps you for so many other situations when you have that power reconnected, when you know where your power is. And from there, we're getting ready for our next Adamuka. So it's always on you if you want to pass by and say hi to our nice Vinyasa Chaturanga. And from there, either you walk back your hands or you make a small, tiny tempo and whoosh, jump back to grab both of your big toes. Take an inhale, straighten, straighten your back especially, so you want to lengthen it forward and exhale back down. Your head is heavy, hanging down. Your, shoulder, your elbows are bending sideways. In your next inhalation, lengthen one more time. And exhale, again, you can do it at the same time or once after the other. Both hands below the palms of your feet. One more time, inhale, separate your vertebra. Imagine it and exhale, bend it. If you don't get there, bend your knees and shift your weight more over your wrists. You want to give them a nice massage. In your next inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bring your legs, bring your hands down. You want to have 100% connection with our hands in the mat and the less connection possible 
with us, without feet. So you press into the floor, align your ears with your shoulders, bring your heels up as high as you can. So this is many out for today. That's perfect. You want to lengthen your spine and bring your hip on top. You can start shifting both feet in flex before stepping. So you can do that until you come into the front. You can use blocks to step on your blocks so it's easy to bring your hips high. But it's all about feeling the weight for some seconds in your arms. And if it's too easy for you already, come up and come down. Until you come in front, you're in front of the mat. Stay bent, your head's low. So we're bringing our right hand pretty much far from us. If you want to grab your shin, the smooth version, let's say, you can also use a belt by just bringing it below your foot or you can grab your big toe. Take your right arm as support. All the weight is on your right foot right now and in your inhale, lift up. So we want to go parallel to the floor, lengthening our spine. Three, two, one, maybe release. And if that is still too easy, make your prayer. Three, two, one. Lowering. Good. We go to the other side. Left hand. It's always all those small actions. They have to be done really consciously. They help you after. So do it with all dedication you can do. Make your bind with the shin or your big toe and slowly take an inhalation to go. So stay low with your front. Two. One. Feel it burning. Slowly release. Find your standing position and maybe your prayer. Three. Two. One. Lower down. Open up, slightly your feet. Come into a short manasana from right to left. So from there, we are, we are in front of our mat. Once more, bring your weight rather towards your chin and lift up your hips. Start lifting our heels as well. Take a deep inhale and roll up. Vertebra by vertebra. Trying to stay high with your heels until you lift your arms up. Stay there. Three, find your line. Find all possible activation through your legs, through your belly. You want to come high, push high. And in your next exhalation, open up, right leg goes to the side or wherever you need to, you need to, to go. Watch the screen. Take another inhale, lift up, and exhale, bend down. So all hands, ten times. Rocket Yoga invites you here again to inhale, open up. Exhale, push your hands in the floor and lift up your heels in order to shift your, your weight of your hips on top of your hands. Release, maybe up to the big toe or go even completely into your handstand again. It's all just a try. If you're down there, keep your heels just high. Push your head in and stay there, pulling your navel as high as you can into your belly. Two, one, exhale, roll it down. Walk your hands further in. Take another inhale and exhale, bend over. From here, you can just stay falling over. If you want to activate that posture by shaping your head together with both hands like a triangle, Bring all the weights on top of your hand palms and head to lift up your feet into your Mukta Hasta Shirshasana. Again, you can decide absolutely freely to stay down and make your forward fold. It's pretty much another very effective way in that practice. And whenever you are, if you are in Mukta Hasta, find your way into Bakasana maybe or your direct way back. If you're in Bakasana, there is still a lot of freedom to try a low Bakasana and come back up high. 
before finding your chaturanga into a downward facing dog. So here we are. Take another inhale. Step or jump into sitting. And we're opening our legs. Find a nice sitting posture. Walk forward with your fingertips. Take another inhale. Close your shoulder blades. And exhale, lengthen and come forward. Start to feel how your back is slowly flattening. How you open up your front body. Come back up. Let's bring our feet together. Some small butterflies. Your back is straight. Two. One. We're going to relax our back now a little. Orient it towards the front part of your mat, like this where you are. Use a belt if you have it. Or if not, and you are flexible. Take your big toes. You can also take your shin if that is more comfortable for you. Whatever allows you to stay in there, like even hanging a little. So you want to lengthen your spine again. And if it's easy, let your head drop back. Your legs are still straight. Three, two, keep lengthening and pulling your toes. One, in your next exhalation, we are going to round our back. Now we really want to do it and just roll back in your exit. Your toes might touch the floor over your head and slowly, that's the nice part, we take a deep inhale, take your inertia and find your way back to find your balance. I know it's, it's the first time, so the second time everybody knows rather what to do and how to do it, so we take it one more time. In your exhale, push all the air out, become round and roll back until your big toes touch the floor. Stay there with your mind, take another inhale, shift forward and maybe freeze. If you're there, release. Let's take it to four, five, three, four, five, three, wow, <laughs> two, and one. Exhale. Cross your legs. Come forward, find your own way into Chaturanga. So if you're used to it, the simple version would be come forward with your hands, lift your hip, step back, step back, Chaturanga. The more active way would be, you choose, come forward with both hands, lift your hips and take a jump, okay? And at last, for more hand practice or arm strength practice, stay close to your hips. Take a deep inhale. Cross your legs, hug them in, and shift your weight towards your chin in front of you. Lift and come into your chaturanga. So when you're there, find your same way back to sit. So you can choose to step, step, sit. You can choose to bend and jump. Or you can do the same. Jump again and pass your hands before sitting. And when you're there, we're going into our Manichasana. In your next inhale, bring your right hand up, activate through your left foot, and exhale first, bend forward. Make yourself long. Draw a half circle and maybe find your bind. If that is not too easy for you, make that bind in front of you, either with your shin or with your foot. Pull it, inhale, and exhale. Wherever you are, if you have that bind, our goal is to even our shoulders and go lower, even. Your throat is lengthening. Two, one. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, release. Inhale, left hand comes up. Really open. And exhale, push the air out. Make space and bring your left elbow to the outside part of your right foot. Take an inhale, row, and exhale, twist over. You can stay there. You can again make that bind. Just remember wherever you are, feel your breathing. 
lift it. So inhale, always grow, expand. And exhale, always into more. You don't want to bend over. You want to stay straight. 
and bend back. Two. One. Inhale, release. Open up your chest. Stay here. Keep your leg high. Three. Relax your face and smile out to that world. Two. If you have a window in front of you. One. And maybe with your own power, bend that knee into half notice here. If there is a not so comfortable feeling, again, bring your heel just on the floor as much as you can. In the next inhalation, right hand goes up. And exhale, twist over. Your hand palm is looking to the floor and your knee is pulling down your fingers. Okay? In your next inhale, lift, extend, and exhale, twist over. If you have that half lotus, you can apply a bind with your left hand that helps you twist more over. If not, you can always bring your hand just towards the back or let it lie on the muscle. Two. Push that knee far behind you. Take an inhale, exhale. So you want to sit on both of your buttocks. If that's easy, you can interlace. Always straighten it. So if your back is sitting like that, making that line, I would prefer to release it and start to come straight and from there for the next step. That's all what Robin is trying to say with all types of variations. You do step by step and feel the progression. In your next inhale, release, cross your legs, step or jump forward, come into your vinyasa. And come back to sit. This time you can try to jump and lift that left leg point. For the next time, just to know, there's always a direct way. Take a deep inhale here and exhale, fall over to bring that leg towards you. Focus on straightening, lean back. That lean back helps you to find that rooting feeling in your, in your mat, on your mat. And from here apply either shin, either foot, or this time left wrist interlaced. Also bend if you have it. And exhale, always bring that leg towards you. Keep your chest opened. Look up towards your toes. There is where you want to get with your chin. Two, one, slowly release, stay here, open up, lengthen in your spine, three, two, one, keep it tight, and exhale, from here, hmm. find your half lotus, or your heel just on the floor. <clears throat> Take another inhale, left arm goes up, exhale, that hand, palm looking to the floor, goes down, so you want to have the root of your palm pushing into the floor, just here. So you might even lean a little over, take an inhale and exhale twist. If you have it, make that bind and apply it to the conscious breathing. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, enter. If you're breathing really fast, always try to slow down in moments of silent postures like this. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, release. Come back into your Chaturanga. And exhale. Inhale, facing. So we're pretty much at the end of today's practice. So you either jump through one more time, step, walk, or jump normally to come to Setu Bandasana. Your heels are close to your hips, buttocks. Walk your shoulder blades in. So you can stay interlaced with your heels and hands. You can interlace your fingers even. And just pull up. You can also choose to support your hips a little more and hang in there. It's a more passive way, but it's actually still a very intense arching in your back if you do that. So wherever you are, just keep breathing and bring your chest closer to your chin each time. You 
want to open your heart. If you're very comfortable here, you can bring your palms together and let your knees just fall out. Bring them farther out in front of you. And just feel the effect in your hips. Slowly come down. In your next exhale, wherever you are, you can repeat any version that you didn't do in this pose right now. Or if you prefer, you can go into the complete posture, which would be the wheel. So for today, if you're in Urdhva, you can repeat up to five times, trying to bring weight off your hands and shift it more, um, sorry, off your, your legs and shift it more over your hands. That's opening our shoulders. If you are at the wall today, I invite you to try some drop backs. If you do drop backs already, you can do it with that wall if you feel um, comfortable enough. If not, the idea would be that you stand comfortably the back towards the wall and just let really try on working that as you open your heart, open your chest and then you start dropping over. It's not the opposite. You always want to create space first and look over. If your fingertips really high from you where you still can see them touch the wall, that would be great. Keep opening and then you start walking down, walking down, walking down, walking down walking down and finding your wall. If you're here, the interesting part would be to have your wrists touching the wall and then push the chest towards the wall. So you want to align it. And whenever you are finished, the same way back up. And slowly, that was really intense. Whenever you come up, come directly back to the floor into your balasana and give yourself a nice massage maybe with fists and just massaging. I actually like to do it with more pressure because it's really releasing tensions of your lower back. Stay there for some more seconds. Whenever you're ready, bring your hands far forward from you. Swipe into your foot with a rasana, a smooth one. And exhale in your adhamuka. Come back to sit. So you just hug in your knees and you start rolling back. Expanding your, your back as much as you can out. Feel the tension between your knees and your hands. So that helps you to keep actually that bouncing. And do it for some couple of times. It should be smooth. And it's definitely not going to be smooth the first time because you're still discovering your body here. And if it's already smooth, feel each vertebra rolling over, coming back. And if you're a pro already and enjoy it the same way like me, you come to standing, take it in the middle, exhale, come back down, roll over, even balancing a little your knees over your forehead. Come back up, inhale, and exhale, come back down, roll over, take an inhale, exhale, and the last time you come there, maybe you repeat one more, find your Shalamba Sarvangasana. So here it's, we're initiating a sort of auto practice. Your body is straight, finding alignment. And the less your hands have to support the weight of your back, the more you are in line, just feel that adjustment. If you feel you're controlled, you can get rid of your hands even and balance some more. Always with the condition not to have too much weight on your neck. You can also try some more advanced modifications by bringing your hands just next to your legs and balance on top of your shoulder blades especially. Your breathing rhythm gets deeper, more balanced. 
Imagine yourself breathing from your big toes up to your lungs and back. How that circle, that vital circle, is initiating a new rhythm. Move your legs wherever you want to move them right now. If there's some dance you would like to do. They're free without gravity right now. Whatever there is, you would like to feel your upper body straight. And whenever you are finished, staying with the breathing, slow and deep, bring your knees on top of your forehead, bring your hands down and start slowly rolling back. And feel each other right here. Help yourself with your hands to roll back. Flatten your back as much as you can until you feel your lower back on the floor. And if you want to give it some last shivering strength moments, keep your legs straight as much as you can before your heels are touching the floor. And release. So if you're here, you can choose on your own base. If you would like to finish today's practice with Shir Shasana, a headstand, 10 breathings if you go there. Or if you want to rather just stay here, starting to relax, adjust your body for Shavasana. to bliss. 